These notes are more detailed. If there are any questions, you can pose them at the end of the service. Now, later I'll show you all a video, and when we do sermons from now, so I always keep one principle in mind. This is not about glory. It's not about getting gaining glory. Glory comes only to our majestic ruler, Jesus. All glory and power and honor and majesty belongs to our great God, the Trinitarian God. But when we study the scriptures, we must always be humble. We know, we know, because God has given us the best scriptures that we know of in this country. While we cannot compare it to someone that say like Tim Conway or Keith Daniel, we know we are pretty solid on pretty solid ground. We can see it because every time we look at videos of righteous men preaching, every time we study the scriptures, every day when we look at the scriptures, whether we look at the Psalms or some gospel or some part of prophecy, you will find that what we are saying is really true. Any eyes that are open will know that we are true. Okay, and you know, especially when we go through the book Demons in the Church on Fridays, we can see that we are on the same line. We still think the same way. And when you look at what Keith Daniel says, you will find that his similar words are echoed in the past. And who do we give credit to? Our Lord Jesus. Not me, not anybody else, but the Lord Jesus. So when we learn the scriptures, we learn it in humility. We try to gain something each day. We build up on that knowledge. As we move towards the end okay Philippians 4 chapter 1 therefore my brethren dearly beloved and long for now you see we got to understand in the first century church the love they had among each other is so strong they're not afraid to use the word love in the modern world when you use the word love it has a very cynical connotation to it it doesn't feel right but look at the love he has for them and then he says what? My joy and my crown. Now what is the crown? Crowns of righteousness. Because you see, Paul helped to build that church at Philippi. So Paul is like a crown to him. Because it's a kind of thing that's part of him. And it's his joy. How many of you sitting right here right now can safely say that this is a joy to be part of this church? How many of you safely say that you have actually put in your blood and sweat for this church to grow? Think about that for a while. So stand fast in the Lord. I barely believe it. What is the first verse? It says, stand fast in the Lord. It's not about falling away. It's about standing fast for the Lord. It's not about giving excuses and start blaming everyone. No, it's about standing fast for the Lord. People can and will fall away. Even those that are so-called filled with the Holy Spirit, the zealots, are they really Christians? They're not really Christians, so they look like they're standing fast when they're not, because it hasn't been tested. But you see, in Europe and in the Middle East, when the faith was tested, very few remain Christians. They fade away, they fall away. In Singapore, the churches are filled to rafters on Sundays because they haven't been tested yet. But wait, it's coming. The hour of temptation holds for everybody true. Whether it's in Malaysia, in Singapore, Taiwan, they will face it too. Okay? Now, verse 2. I beseech you, Odias, and beseech Sintaita, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Now, do you know this? I got to admit, I did not know what this meant initially until I read the book Charismatic Chaos by John MacArthur. These two people were not teaching the same things in the church. That's why he said, I wanted to be of one mind. They were not. They were teaching what? Heresies. False teaching. And he points them out. Now, I want you all to look at this carefully, though. Because you're going to be running into this problem from now till the end. You're going to get this again and again and again. 
those who are not in the truth will say, Oh, you're very judgmental. You cannot name and shame. But he's naming two people here. Now, who are these people? From the churches in the Philippi. So that means when he gives this letter to his um, messenger, and they get this and they open up the scroll, they will have these two people who are named, you know. Okay? Eudias and Sintaicha. But remember, they're not very popular because they're not mentioned in the book of Acts. But they were just mentioned here because, they, by the way, they are Christians. Or those claiming to be Christian. Because otherwise, why would Paul ask them to be of the same mind? They're not pagan Greeks. No. They are Christian. So-called preachers. He asked them to be of the same mind. Why? Because they don't teach the same thing. Now, the argument that I had, like for example today, a person claiming to be a Christian holds me on the phone for about five minutes. Of course, talking the usual nonsense, it's the usual rubbish. And the point is this, the idea that there can be a separate conclusion to the interpretation of the Bible is rubbish. Now, while there may be small differences because of language, not everyone's familiar with KJV English. There may be certain differences, I agree. And certain interpretations, like for example, the mode of baptism, I agree. But the central teaching about the full gospel of Christ remains the same. People who claim that you can continue to sin are outside the line. So the Baptist churches teaching that is wrong. So is the evangelical churches. <clears throat> and also, and all those who teach about the wanting of the gifts, that's also outside the teaching of Christ. The central message of the gospel, so they are also outside. They are out of the same mindset. You understand? So all of them are wrong. All of them are wrong. Be very strong in the Lord in this one. Three, and I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow. Notice, uh, I love the way it says, true yoke fellow. Now, yoke means you are the same yoke. Same yoke of Christ. And true, I love the word when you use the word true. In other words, what is it? It must be true. Anything outside that is not Christianity. It's not Christianity at all. It must be true. Anyone claiming to be a Christian, and, and you know the best part, I asked that person. I mean, I tried it for eight years. But the good thing is that it's going to end next week because I've already fired and she's taken the bait. She's going to come down to this office next Sunday. I will finish off the job. That one has to be finished. So I've got one less problem in the running. That person... Now, I'm not saying that that person wants to lie. But you see, when we give our wills over to sin, automatically the Lord pushes them to a delusion and, they, and she is deluded. And you know who she says are the wrong preachers? Would you believe she says, Tim Conway, Carter Coleman, Keith Dating are wrong? And you know who she says is the righteous one? No kidding. Huh? I quote the name she used, Jewel Alstein. Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland. Can you believe that? The most heretical people, she says, are spirit-filled and God-filled men. And the ones that are right, she says, they're in hiding. She said it today. Can you believe that? And she says, oh, look at Joseph Prince. 32,000. Joseph Prince. Who will type out YouTube? Joseph Prince exposed. Incredible. Blasphemy. You can see where these people are now. The question is, can a person be a Christian like that? No chance. Because why? A Christian is a believer, believes in Christ, in spirit and in truth. You cannot take truth out of that. That is the important principle. Once you take truth out of that, that person cannot be a believer. It's the verse of Christ himself. In fact, next week when I start the attack, that verse from John will be the first one I quote. And then I'm going to keep going on up to that. And then I'm going to finish the battle once and all. And after that, I'm going to tell her, I'm changing my number. You cannot call me again. And I'm going to make sure that's the last time. But I'm going to make sure it's two hours. And this time, she agreed. I'm going to make sure that door is locked. And I'm going to make sure she can't run from the battle. And I'm going to wipe it out. And she said the pastor is wrong for saying she is not a Christian. So I'm calling that pastor again. This time, I want to make sure it's the final knockout blow. She has to be taken out, smashed completely and shown as a hypocrite and a liar and then it's over then after that it's up to the Lord to do whatever he wants let her die point is this we have to do that 
help those women which labored with me in the gospel. Notice the women also who labored with him in the gospel. Help them. With Clement also. Clement is a good one. Clement is good. And with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Got it? The book of life. You see, those who do the will of the Father, their names are in the book of life. They're not in the book of deeds. They're not in the book of judgment or whatever. They're not in the damnation of the lake of fire. Their names are in the book of life. Always remember that. And people who serve the Father are going to be in the names in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. You know this hymn, you know. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. It's a beautiful hymn. If you ever get a chance, try to listen to it. And I know now know where they got the lyrics from. Or the idea of the title, rather. The lyrics are not from the rest of the but that title. We must always rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because we have a wonderful God who's given us a chance to know the truth. And I tell you, that's a great gift. It's better than money. And by the way, this pagan was talking about money today as usual. Saying that my life is a failure because I don't make enough money. So that means that's how we judge, you see. So the, you know the, the beggar in Luke 18, the one that was with the Lazarus, uh, I think it's Luke 18 or 16. That person was in heaven in Abraham's bosom. That so-called failure is, in her words, that's a failure. Can you imagine the blasphemy of such a wicked individual? Now, the person may not intend to be wicked, but once they give them over, they become wicked. The wickedness will really start to show. Blasphemous. If you really listen to it, uh, and I invite you all, uh, you all are welcome. Because I said I will bring people if you want to watch. I don't mind. If you want to bring others, also can. The bigger the audience, the better. You know why? I want the fall to be higher. The bigger the audience, the better. It's more humiliating. It's going to be a crushing blow. I already prepared my scriptures already. I prepared the whole line of that. And I'm so glad she's bit, bitten the bait. It's time to bite. Get the head of the snake off. The snake has to die. Now, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. You see, what is it? Moderation. We have to be moderate. Moderate in the way we do things. And the Lord is at hand. Everywhere you go, the Lord is with you. Okay? Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be named unto God. Isn't it so beautiful? That one verse. In everything dedicated to the Lord and pray to the Lord for that government. That's why sometimes when I talk to you all, okay, I talk to Deborah, Elizabeth and Joshua regularly. I said, it's not about doing something. I told you all so many times, it's not about how we did Shirlene. You see, when I was praying for Shirlene the other day, then immediately the idea pops into my mind, remember? And then I said, hey, Elizabeth, I sent the SMS on Saturday morning. I said, let's do this. And suddenly, three breakthroughs come in. Not two, we found that another one. And suddenly, it happens because the Lord answers prayer. He will give you the answer. The point of all that you all would like to do is you all pray, maybe, but you don't ask for the answer. You're not waiting for the answer. So you're impatient, you take that step and you do something. No, wait for the answer. Okay, wait for that answer. He will give you the answer. He will give you the answer. I'm serious, he will give you the answer. Wait patiently, he will answer you. And by the way, you're supposed to praise unceasingly. So it's not I just pray one day and then I expect the miracle to come in. Whoever thinks that way really doesn't understand the Bible. You pray unceasingly. Sometimes people pray for a long time for something to come true. We pray for a few days, then we get disappointed because it doesn't happen. Like look at Mangru, she responded only yesterday night, then I SMS a few of you. I sent the SMS last Sunday, no. When did she respond? Saturday. No, today morning, sorry. I think it's 12, it's past 12. She said good morning, so it must be past 12. So it took a long time, almost seven days for her to respond, but she still did. Okay, wait for it. Be patient. Sometimes we also let ourselves down. I also admit, I let myself down because I was getting patient. I was saying, why well, Mangru never respond on that now? I helped her and everything. And suddenly, and her SMS was full of enthusiasm of coming here. It says, I look forward to joining your group. Isn't that a breakthrough? Amen to that. So we got to keep praying every day for that change. We got to pray for Jihau to join us, for Mungru to join us, for Shirley Nibanchi to join us. Keep praying unceasingly. And the Lord will answer the prayer. If we don't have prayer answered, have you ever wondered why? Could it be because of disobedience, not waiting for the time? 
Maybe we do pray sincerely, that I don't question. But some of you can't wait. You can't wait, you make decisions even before you talk to me about it. And I'm the leader, that's even better still. So if you bypass me, you bypass the Lord, because I'm below, below I'm just a leader of the church. The point is that you cannot do that kind of thing. You have to ask the Lord and wait under supplications. Ask the Lord for the answers and He will give you the answers. He will give you the answers. In a few weeks' time, there will be more people here. We will start growing again. Jihau will come in January, Mungru on the 6th of December. And surely we're going to try and push it by the end of the year. Eventually, we will grow again. But we've got to keep trying, you see. There are new students that are coming quite a lot in my old level group and others. We've got to try and bring them in as well. We've got to try. We've got to push it. It's unceasing. We've got to push it. Okay, push it, push. Next. Seven. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds to create Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? I tell you, that verse is so beautiful. The peace of God. God gives you real peace. Real peace, you know. Now, peace for some people means listening to music. That's temporal. Yes, I mean, you can listen to a nice song and you will forget your problems. I agree. You can go running and jogging like I used to do. You will forget your problem for 30 minutes when I run a 5km. Sorry, I don't run in 5.30. I run it much faster. But then you forget it. But the point of the Bible is that when you want inner peace, inner peace, you're going to get it from who? The Lord. And the Lord will keep your heart and you'll keep your mind at peace. Why are some of us not, have you ever wondered, including me, why do we have Tomor? We create that problem by pushing the Lord away. So we are going further and further, not closer to Him. We have strife when we should be having peace. We should have peace. And I can tell you, it's a beautiful feeling. Okay, number eight. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, notice that true is come first. Honest comes next. Just. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think of these things. Fantastic. I'll tell you something. Today, uh, these verses are the things you should hold to your heart. These are the verses you should be holding to your heart, you know. They are a promise, you know. This is not a verse like saying that, okay, they crossed the Red Sea, no. This is verses that can apply to your daily lives. Do you understand that? You can take it, use it, and minister to your own soul through the Word of God, ladies and gentlemen. Understand what I'm saying? This is what the Bible is speaking to you. The problem with our church is basically too much division has occurred over too long. We're not all in the same spirit. But if we did the same thing and we all had the same mind and we had the same spirit, we can deal with the issue. Look at the way we've been working with Shirley. When everything starts coming together, you saw the punch through. We prayed and prayed and then eventually three things came out and it broke through some ground. But you see, why didn't the full miracle? I'll tell you why there's no full miracle there yet. A few blessings for you. Because we haven't prayed long enough. And two, we're still trying to get people doing their own stuff. Once we put everything in the Lord's hands, He will open the door for us. But that does not mean we sit under a coconut tree and drink coffee and then wait for the miracle. We have to do what the Lord wants us to do and He will open the door. And I believe it's happening. I believe it's happening. Her mother is on the run. Her mother is actually on the defensive now. We've got to keep praying and ask the Lord to help and Shirley can join us. Okay? Actually, it will be pretty good if we can get people like Mengru, Shirley, and all that. Uh, Jihau, three people already, the room will be filled. That would be a blessing. Nine, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now, notice uh, seen. Okay, notice, look at the words. Uh, he used learned. Learn from what? The preaching. And received. Received through scriptures or letters. And heard. Okay, also through preaching. Seen in me do. Now they saw Paul because Paul was a righteous example. And what he says, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Isn't it so beautiful? If we do the things of the Lord, the Lord will be with us. Nobody can stand against the church of God. What's happening around the world is because they have no God. Even those claiming to be Christian, not all. There are some really good churches. 
I've been misquoted a lot of this, especially this uh, apostate who spoke to me today. I never said everyone was wrong. This apostate was called thing about missionaries. Since when did I criticize the missionaries? You ever hear me criticize missionaries? Never, right? But of course they put the, the, the words in my mouth right? because a liar is a liar is a liar. So. But when we do this, we remember, you know, there are good Christians around. We're not the only ones. There are many good Christians around in other countries, in South Africa, in Kenya. There are many good Christians. I know there are missionaries in Cambodia. They really, they love the Lord. We are not alone. We need to seek these people out. And we need to seek honest Christians who want to know the truth. And take them out, like Sherlyn. I'm so glad that Sherlyn is resisting about a church. By the way, I'm quite surprised. Huh? Because her mother had not paid me for some time for tuition fees. Her mother is very, very punctual. But her mother missed about two weeks, which is four lessons. But I gave the thing off. I said to Sherlyn, it's free, so you can give your mother. The mother didn't respond. But one thing is good, no? the mother introduced uh, her own sister and three of the sister's children are joining this week. That means I know I, I got it and it's also another thing because once those children join in and they like my lessons, they're also going to, I think, similar churches. It means we've got three more. And then if you can pull them off, you can see. So you see God is opening the door. The God, God is opening the door. We can try it. Don't give up. We can increase our numbers, but we must do the right thing. Okay, the right thing. But most importantly, we do the right thing because God has told it to us. And don't run ahead of Him. Okay, 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, and now that in your last care of me have flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lack opportunity. Now, what it means by this, okay? And that now, at the last, your care for me have flourished again. So it means the, in the last part, as He comes, by the way, He's in jail. I found out at the end of the things he's in prison and he actually the love of it's flourishing okay and he says what wherein you were also careful but you lacked opportunity so they couldn't show it but they were careful about it not that i speak in respect of want for i've learned in whatsoever state i am therefore therewith to be content sometimes so honestly speaking all of you are you really content about what the lord has done for you think about it just for a while and play it in your minds can you all honestly and sincerely say that you are happy with everything? Now don't get the Bible wrong. We should, we should be closer to the Lord and we should seek the Lord. We should seek the truth. In that sense, we should never be satisfied. But in our daily ones, food, clothing, air condition, room. You know a lot of churches in the third world, they don't have air con. They are in the heat you know, of the sun. You know there are some churches in tax roofs in Africa in Cambodia, Vietnam. What are we complaining about? <laughs> Correct, what are we complaining about? We lack nothing. If we have the Lord in ourselves, money becomes absolutely inconsequential. It's more important to have the Lord, the bread of life, the word of God. What's the point of having the whole world if we don't even know the Bible? Okay. Now, let's go to this. 12. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need so you see God trains him up he learns something you see if this is why money is a bad thing for preachers when preachers get so comfortable in their big cars and all that right they don't learn the idea of suffering they don't learn how to abound they don't know how to be abased humiliated they don't know how to be in a lowly state those who seek that are really deceiving themselves. That's not what God wants. Now, that's not mean that a person cannot be a real Christian if they come from a rich family. It's not it. But they've got to learn also humility. Learn how to be humble and learn how to suffer right now. Now, next, 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. That verse is so beautiful, 13. I think it's basically the central verse in Philippians. And um, it says that I can do all things. Actually, it's true. We can do all things through Christ. We can minister to others, reach out to others, but how come we fail? That's what I've been trying to say over and over again almost every night when I talk to you all. Because we are not going to Christ. We are using our own skills. we got to ask the Lord for everything to provide the increase, to ensure that Shirley joins us one day, to get in Mengru, to how and others, so they will join us in the service. And we can minister to other people and have more people here. And one day, wouldn't it be so good to have this whole room filled? Not just eight seats, 
12. Put in extra seats at the back. But we cannot succeed if we're going to be everybody doing it by themselves. No, cannot be. 14. Notwithstanding, you have done well. They did communicate with my affliction. Now, what it means is they identified this suffering, you see. Now, 14. Now, ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when they parted from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving. But you only. Now, when he left Macedonia, if you read the Acts, he left Macedonia. The only church that communicated about him giving. Now, when he said giving, it means the needs of the saints. Maybe clothes, food, that kind of thing. The only church that communicated with him is who? The church of Philippi. The Philippians. They gave. They're generous. They gave. And one good thing I think that we have here is I notice this has developed a culture in our church which I think is very good. I see even, even like Sarah communicating us with food and all that is very much appreciated. We really appreciate it. This is something very good about our church. People are giving food. Not that we have to say, hey, give not. No. People are coming forward to give. This is the good thing about our church. I'm not saying we've got a lot of problems here. We've got some good stuff here. Besides having the scriptures and all that. But I'm so glad that we give food, you see. People are contributing to the church. This is what we should be. Now, when people like Mungru come, this is where we got to work strong from now to the 6th of, because we have three weeks, 21 days. We got to make sure that when Mungru comes, the hospitality is strong. We do in a way that will make her feel welcome because she's looking forward to it. I said, I said to her in my SMS, my church is very friendly. Okay. We have to look very good on that day. But not be hypocrites. I'm not saying go like the Joel Austin kind of thing. No. We've got to push it. And when she comes, make her feel welcome. Maybe some of you ladies can talk to her before the service. Maybe she can sit next to Elizabeth. Uh, because she always sits there doing tuition. So it's perfect. So talk to her. Get her to see what is the thing. I will get another Bible. And then we will talk to her. Talk to her and make her feel good. And then later on, if we can minister after the service, we can talk to her even more. And hopefully she can come again and again and again. Okay. But it has to be that way. It has to be that way. Now, let's go to 16. For even in Thessalonica, he sent once again and again unto my necessity. You see, when he was in Thessalonica, there's a letter to Thessalonians later. He sent once and again unto my necessity. That means they still provided him. Can you imagine how much they loved him? Today you ask, try, you try to see. By the way, I know some will criticize me for saying this, but those churches that give to the poor, yeah, they are. They may be churches like FCBC all giving to the poor. I don't dispute that. But if you look at the percentage, it's not like when we read before the Galatians, they don't give the maximum. Because I know, I know, I've been in many churches. Churches have something called a spreadsheet and they actually talk about their accounts. Let me tell you, the vast majority of their accounts is going through salaries, pastor's car, yes. And believe me, the pastor's cars are paid by the churches. It's paid by the churches. Rick Seward has four cars. <laughs> so his church provides him with four cars. Why does he need four cars? Why is he scared? They break down. So three cars can break down at the same time. Two it's already stretching it. Four, that's quantum greed. That's good. It cannot be. <laughs> These people, it's hard to call them Christians. How can you see the angle by which they call themselves Christians? I can't see it. <laughs> what is Christianity is that? I think Rick Seaver is competing with Joel Austin. So <laughs> is that? Now, 17. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Now, you know what it means? You see, if the... Philippians gave a gift. Now, not Paul wanted, no. It's not Paul saying, can you guys please give me something? He didn't say that. Why he requested for a gift is no way. Remember what the Lord says, you give the least to my children, you do it for me as well. So it's their account. So by giving Paul something, up there in heaven, they're watching it. So whose account does it go into? Paul? No. The people at Philippi are the ones who are going to be recommended, commended by God for doing it in the end of all things. Remember the parable of the sheep and the goats? And they said, Lord, 
When did we see you hungered? When did we see you know um, afflicted? And they said, when you did the least for one of these, you did for me. So when we're doing for other Christians, you know who we're doing it? In a way, in a way, we are also adding to our account in heaven. Yes, we do have accounts in heaven. Maybe some like me have deficits, but the point is that we have to be generous. And remember, I'm not saying we've got to be cynical. I'm not like saying, I'm not saying this is not about cynicism. We're not going to be like a Pharisee and said, you see, say, okay, today I give one dollar to the church. One dollar in me up front. One dollar today, one dollar up there. No, it's not that way. It's not trying to manipulate God. God knows the hearts and minds. He will know whether the person is doing it just to ensure that it is an account up in heaven that looks very nice. Or whether the person really like the Philippians did it with their own heart condition. And by the way, you notice it's called the fruits again. That means what is the fruits of the Spirit? One of them is charity. Helping others. And if a person cannot help others, <laughs> what's the Christianity? Try us that with us, busy. Try us that with us, busy. By the way, Lawrence Kong should see his car also. Okay, so the thing is this. 18. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Aphrodite the things which were sent from you. An odor of a sweet smell, the sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. Now, this is not the Old Testament when they gave the animal sacrifices up. Don't get confused with this. In the Old Testament, when they cut up the ram and they burn the ram, it's for God, it's a sweet sacrifice. What he's talking about is the sweet sacrifice, it's the sacrifice of their labors. Their labors to God, what they do for God. That is what the Lord really wants. What the Lord says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Right? The sacrifices of God are a contrite heart. That's what they're giving. And you know when you love the Lord, you give for your fellow Christians, all of it is accountable. Okay? But there's no mean, by the way, I want to make one aside here about the giving. I've been told this by a person calling herself a Christian, that you should give to people like the community chest and all that. No, 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 no. That's not the giving we're talking about in the Bible. A lot of the money in the community church goes to the salaries of those who run it. Like the time Titi Durai of NKF, uh, National Kidney Foundation, the guy was travelling in first class jets and all that. I think that's all. Get that straight. And the guy was charged. Get that straight. It's not. Okay. 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You see, what is the need? Spiritual discernment, knowledge of the word, the bread of life. God will supply all our needs. Amen. But we must be loyal to Him. And we must do the will of the Father. Not talking garbage. We've got to really do what the Lord wants. Now let's look at 20. Now to God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. And you know what Paul says? I put it in my notes. It's like Isaiah 6, 3 and Revelation 4, 11. What it, it says, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. The angelic majesty sing that in the heavens and that's what they're doing right now. Okay? No. 21. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. Notice every saint. Huh? The brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. When I read this, I realized that this is where Paul was at the time. That means when I first did the notes in Philippians 1, I was not sure. But now I'm sure he was in Rome. He wrote this in Rome because Caesar is in Rome. And this he must have been, it's quite sad, he wrote while he was in prison in Rome. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And so he closes off a beautiful epistle. You know, when you look at all this, uh, and you allow yourself to grow in the Lord, without giving excuses and everything, I tell you, it's beautiful. Really beautiful. I want to show you all one thing. I won't play the whole sermon. Now, uh, later on, uh, maybe uh, one of you can translate for Sarah or friend. But this sermon, I want you to see, if you cannot understand his English, at least look at his body language and gain something out of it, because I found it really awesome. Okay? Now, I want you all to see this, uh, because he's got something. I will stop it at the 20-minute mark, okay? But please listen carefully, okay? This is a beautiful message. Every one of us have to hear it. Now, this is Keith Daniel. Now, listen carefully, yeah? Father, in mercy on all of us, come, wash me fresh in the holy blood of Jesus, and cleanse me. 
and fill me afresh with the Holy Spirit and protect us all from the enemy, thy enemy. And ours. And now come by thy mercy and grace and make thy word living alive, throbbing and meaningful to all our hearts as only God can. Brighten our thoughts, take away all hardness, cynicism, anger, unbelief, hatred. Come break the hardest heart. Shock the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, for his glory alone, Amen. I'm going to read to you just a few verses. I'm missing a verse here or there for time. From Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1. And he said unto me, son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me, when he spake unto me, to set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me, and he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation. Verse 4, they are imprudent departed, but I send thee to them, thou shalt say to them, thus saith the Lord God, and they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, that means reject, what I say to you, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, they are rebellious, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. Thou Son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor dismayed at their looks. They say, Son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I look, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and no, a roll, a scroll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without and there was written within lamentations, mourning, woe. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll. Digest it. And go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll, to digest as I meditate as I digest. The revelation came in my heart and brokenness and burned. No, son of man, cause thy belly to eat, fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. I did eat, it was in my mouth as honey, the sweetness. Verse 10, moreover he said to me, son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart. And hear with thine ears, and go, get thee to them of the captivity. Speak unto them, 
Tell them, thus saith the Lord God, whether they hear, whether they forbear. Verse 17, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If thou givest them not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from the wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Two warnings to the people and to the preacher that God tells to preach faithfully. Preacher, you are not responsible. You are not responsible only for what you say in God's pulpit. But you are going to be accountable and held responsible by God for what you do not say in God's pulpit. You are not only held responsible for what you say in God's pulpit, preacher. You will be held accountable by God for what you do not say, preacher. The words of Martin Luther. Fourteen eighty three. From out the millions of the earth, God often calls a man to preach the word and for the truth to take a loyal stand. It is sad. To see him shun his cross. Nor stand in its defense. Between the fields of right and wrong. A preacher of the fence. Before him are the souls of men. Destined for heaven or hell. An open Bible in his hand. And yet he dare not tell all of the truth that's written there. He feareth an offense, the shame of heaven, the joy of hell. A preacher on the fence. Most surely God has called that man to battle for the right is his. To ferret out the wrong and turn on us the light. And yet he dare not tell the facts. He fears the consequence. The most disgusting thing on earth. A preacher on the fence. I agree. If he should stand up for the wrong, the right he'd not defend. He should stand up for the right, the wrong he would offend. His mouth is closed. He cannot speak for freedom or against. Great God deliver us from him, that preacher on the fence. His better judgment, common sense, they pull him to the right. Behold, and grip the topmost rail and hang with all his might. His love of praise it holds him back, keeps him from going hence. He's in a most unpleasant plight, that preacher on the fence. But soon, both sides 
will find him out and brand him as a fraud, a coward, he who dare not please the devil or his God. His sanctimonial pose, it's all a miserable pretense. And men of zeal will always grieve that preacher on the fence. That hymn was written over a hundred years ago. by a preacher called C.C. Moore, courageous. The grave, fearful warning to all preachers. The grave, fearful warning to all preachers. Woe unto you, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Luke 6, 26. Do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Galatians 1 verse 10, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 4, verse 6, nor of men sought we glory. James 3 verse 1, my brethren, brothers, be not many masters, literary teachers of the oracles of God. Be not many teachers of this group, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. James 3, verse 1. Knowing we shall be received the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend or when I was a young preacher with a burning heart I was staggered by God one day and I walked into a large hall and unexpectedly of being confronted by God I looked up at a very large plaque in the wall. Art thou ready, O oh preacher, to face the consequences of letting the Lord speak through thee as he will? Art thou ready, O oh preacher, to face the consequences Letting the Lord speak through thee as he will. I literally trembled. And then I said from my soul, Yes, I am God. I am God. Proverbs 24 verse 10. If thou faint, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. John Huss of Bohemia, today Czech, the Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia. John Huss of Bohemia, 1370 to 1450. 1415, as they tied him to the stake, thousands gathered 
raking in 